Hello, my name is Zane Ryder. I'm a master's student for water resources engineering at the University of Kansas. I'm here to present my ongoing research titled Investigating the Drivers of Cyanotoxins and Taste and Odor Compounds in Stream Bed Algal Mats. We thank the Kansas Water Resources Research Institute and the Kansas NSF EPS Corps for supporting this project. I did this work along with my advisor, Dr. Husich, and collaborators, Dr. Sturm and Dr. Harris. Our research looks at a type of algae called cyanobacteria, which can grow in freshwater environments and have been found to release a variety of chemicals, including taste and odor compounds and cyanotoxins. Taste and odor compounds, specifically geosmin and MIB, make the public skeptical of safe drinking water and are expensive to treat. Cyanotoxins, which include microcystin, anatoxin A, and saxitoxin, can potentially cause liver and nerve damage and have been linked with livestock and pet deaths. Benthic algae, or those that grow attached to a substrate, are less understood compared to their planktonic counterparts, and the variables that promote the production and release of toxins are poorly understood. With this study, we investigate how land use of stream ecosystems impacts the abundance of cyanobacteria-dominated mats and the rate of toxin and nuisance compound production. Our research objectives are to assess the cyanotoxin and taste and odor compound levels in three Kansas streams, to analyze the impacts of water quality on cyanotoxin and taste and odor compound release, and to relate land use impacts on water quality and cyanotoxin and taste and odor compound release. The study site in question for this research includes three streams in Johnson County, Kansas, just southwest of Kansas City, which have varying land use differences. Indian Creek is the most urban at 90% urbanized land use. Mill Creek exhibits a mixed land use at 62% urban. And Blue River is more rural and agriculture based at only 21% urban land use. To better understand what causes cyanobacteria to release cyanotoxins, we look at the drivers and factors related to this. The main driver we are investigating is the land use change and urbanization have on the biota. The factors within this driver are tree cover, water quality, temperature, hydrology, and more. From these differences in the factors, we would then expect a range of benthic cyanobacteria toxin dynamics that we could then analyze. The flow chart below this demonstrates our methodology. In each stream, we chose three benthic mat sites we then perform sensor-based and collection-based readings on the benthic mats themselves and in the water. The collected samples can then be studied further in a lab for analysis such as total suspended solids, nutrient analysis, taxonomic analysis, and cyanotoxin analysis. We collected the samples in the field weekly starting in August of 2021 through last week. Water samples are captured on site and algae samples are gathered via cobbles from the stream, which are scraped for algae. The toxin analysis we perform is on the intracellular toxins. We perform two analyses on the cyanotoxin, one with ELISA kits to detect the concentrations of the toxin, and two using qPCR, we detect the number of gene copies that code for the toxin producing cells. The data we do have show that cyanobacteria are present in all sites and the urban streams tend to have a higher concentrations of cyanobacteria. Site B2 shows that site specific characteristics outweigh general stream characteristics. Site B2, which is a site in the rural stream, Blue River, is the location of bridge construction and it's in a new subdivision and therefore this stream has characteristics more similar to urban streams, such as less vegetation cover and higher potential for nutrient-rich runoff. Several factors have shown trends on their impact to the cyanobacteria concentrations as well. Temperature and conductance show positive direct relationships, and turbidity and TSS show inverse relationships. Cyanotoxin and taste and odor data is still being processed following this fall's field sampling. Nutrient data, which is also in process, can help elucidate the differences in land use. For now, it appears site-specific factors have more impact on cyanobacteria than watershed scale factors. It also appears all sites satisfy the algae's nutrients requirements. Thank you.